prayers of Bruce, Bruce Sunday. And today's gospel is taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 4, verse 31 through 38. And in this passage, we see that Jesus again is with his disciples. And as they're about to eat, the disciples ask Jesus, don't you want anything to eat? And Jesus replies, I have already eaten. And the question that the disciples ask is, did someone come by and sneak food for Jesus to eat that the disciples didn't, didn't know? And that kind of reminds me that when I would, all, you know, when I would travel with the uh, we, we would go from place to place and visiting uh, houses after Sunday. After Kurbana, we would go to a house, and then after that, another member may invite us to a house. And what's very interesting is, every stop, there's always some sort of meal. Whether the meal may be at church, or whether we go to someone's house, that there, that there will be a meal. And then by the time we go to the second and third house, what happens? We are full. But yet, we eat. One day I was with our Akathubo's Baba, and it was in the middle of the Christmas Lent. And you know, in, in our church, we began starting the Christmas Lent of 25 days. It means from December 1st to December 25th, that's the Lent. But now, uh, you know, the Holy Church has decreased it where we do a 10-day Lent from December 15th to December 25th. So we went to someone's house and not knowing that, you know, Dedimini Bawa was on Lent for all 25 days, cooked chicken curry and beef, cu beef curry. And so, Bawa ate. And in the, in the ride back home, one of the Achins that was with us asked Baba, Baba, that was, that, that was meat. You know, you put no man. So, you know, and then Baba said something that was very ministerial and very pastoral. He said, yes, I am fasting. I am on Lent. But this family prepared a meal. And when they placed it in front of me, if I said no and they took it away, that family would have felt very bad. And so, so Baba, wanting to meet the needs of the people, accepted that. So in the scripture, Jesus had already eaten. But it wasn't physical food. It was spiritual food. As Jesus says, I have food to eat of which you do not know. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. That is Jesus Christ's food. Is to do the will of that of him who sent me. That is where he gets that spiritual nourishment. And now, Je now Je Jesus goes on to say this. Uh, he says, He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. And we see that it's a continuation. Jesus sowed his life to us. He planted his life to us and for us. And we reap the benefits. We reap that relationship with God. 
We, re we read that unity with God. Now, when we look at our lives, what are we sowing and what are we reaping? You know, I'm very blessed to have visited many, many churches in our diocese. And to see the kind of works that these churches are doing. You know, our parents, you all have come here and you sowed our faith, our traditions here. So that we, your children, could reap what you have sowed. But now, you look at what's going on. That there are a lot of people of our generations who are leaving, who are going other places to be spiritually nourished, to be spiritually healed. See, we need to reap what we sow. And I know for our generation, we're trying to reap, we're, we're, we're trying to sow for our children so that when they grow up, that they are able to live in that faith, to live in that truth, and to be in unity. And so we need to reap what we sow. Just as Jesus came to sow his life, and we weep, we too must be doing the same. My dear family, it's, it's a joy and honor to be here.